Hello all, a requested video. Uh, this is from Mexico, because why the hell not? I'll take money from anywhere. And if you want a requested video, you have a question, and you don't want me to answer it via email at assholeconsulting.com, you actually want your question read on the YouTubes, I can do that. It just costs an extra five bucks because I got to film it and upload it and all that. Uh, <clears throat> so Gilberto writes, Hello, Captain. Hope you're doing well. My name is Gilberto. I just recently turned 23 years old. I'm currently in my last year of medical school in Mexico, and after that I'm facing a year of compulsory social service, courtesy of the soon-to-be socialist Mexican state. That is sick and wrong, man. I'll tell you this, if that bullshit ever comes here, and I know a lot of the universities are requiring that you have like some kind of social... You know, they require diversity in all these other leftist bullshit train, uh, classes, but I, I think even some require, like, you, to, in order to get honors, especially when it was my day, in order to have, like, graduate with official honors, fuck your 3.96 GPA. No, you, you needed to, like, donate time and have, like, you had to participate a certain number of hours in all these socialist uh, categories. But, yeah, if, if that came to it, fuck it, I wouldn't do it. Uh, anyway. I write you because I'm unsure about my future career prospects. I have been feeling extremely hesitant about doing a medical residency here in Mexico. I'm interested in the field of anatomical pathology. The medicine residencies here do not provide a livable wage, 750 US dollars per month. And the work, work prospects or specialties don't look very bright. Well, if that's not a good field, uh, anatomical pathologists, let it interrupt if you permit me to interrupt here a little bit. Because I don't see how you could be a doctor and not be in demand. If, if I understand, it's how disease passes on. Anatomical pathology. Okay. Diagnosed based on macroscopic... Yeah, I, I don't know why you... That wouldn't be a good... Uh, uh, Pathology. I'm gonna look up salary. Pay scales is five out of five. So anatomical pathologist earns an average salary of 181,000 a year. I, I don't know. Maybe the residency sucks, or maybe Mexico sucks. But shit, dude, come to the United States. And even with Obama and all that stuff. Um, We'd rather have you than your illegal alien brothers and sisters who don't leak a, speak a lick of fucking English and have no skills except picking fruit. <clears throat> anyway, the work prospects for specialties don't look very bright. Well, here they do. So maybe in Mexico they don't. You might be more familiar with it than I am. With extremely long work hours, the salary is between two to 3000 k per month. I've been abroad in Eastern Europe two times working shit jobs and enjoyed the local culture vastly more than the Mexican culture in which I was raised. I do not see myself living in Mexico for all my life. It might be wrong... Uh, to say this, no, nothing's wrong for you to say. It's your opinion. There's no, you know, kill children, yeah, and kill the Jews, oh, yeah, probably something wrong. But this is you're fine. But I despise this country. It has all the flaws of the United States, but none of the upsides. I count. We have upsides. <laughs> I count the days to expatriate. I have been tinkering with electronic textbooks and parts for the electronic score store for the last six months in an attempt to learn something about that field and possibly become an entrepreneur. Question, should I suck it up, become a pathologist in Mexico, and then leave the country, or should I focus my energy on becoming an entrepreneur uh, in that time scale? Two, I have an idea for a startup that I have been discussing with some electrical engineers in Houston. It involves the creation of a fairly cheap prototype of medical device, 3,000 US dollars. The details are fairly technical. Should I concentrate in trying to create my prototype myself, learn electronics for another year or two on my own to do so, or try to commercialize what they have? Uh, okay, here's the deal. With your career, two separate things. Well, one, uh, the answer to your overall question is you should do both. Okay? Uh, that's how doctors make big fucking coin. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but like you, you look at Medtronic and these doctors, they're doctors, but then they made heart defibrillators or pacemakers and then they made real fucking money, like billions of dollars. Um, shit, I was on this boat cruise, um, there's a big lake to the west, well, west and south, I mean, but to the west of the Twin Cities called Lake Minnetonka, and there's, like, the lake where all the money is, and we went past the doctor's house who invaded, who invaded breathe right nasal strips. Regular doctor couldn't afford that house. I mean, maybe at the end of his life, but, I mean, fucking huge. So, I say you do both. 
uh, because what you really got here is your career and then also your hobby, which you seem to have a really real interest in. Um, and uh, this is again my dual prong approach. You always have your regular job and you always have your entrepreneurial job. Yeah, it's going to suck doing both at the same time. I don't know doing residency if you're going to have time to do it. Um, but uh, I say do both over the course of your life. Um, then uh, the specific first question, um, I this is still number one. I would focus on getting your doc. You have put so much time and effort into it. You only got a year of that socialist fucking compulsory social service and then your residency. Do it in Mexico or, and you know the field better, <clears throat> maybe go into, into another country do your residency there. The key thing, and this is we had a, another person write about becoming a doctor, and she was thinking about where should she go to become a doctor, is you're going to have to look at what it requires in terms of licensure for different countries. So you seem to like Eastern Europe, start asking around what it re what's required to become a doctor there. Because um, <clears throat> they say, well, we'll take any, uh, any graduate degree or any doctoral degree, but then your residency has to be done here. We don't consider it in Mexico. Go to fuck there. Um, your English is impeccable, by the way, and I imagine if you're in Eastern Europe, you're, you must have an IQ of like 200,000, 200,000. <laughs> um, so, and here's the other thing. It seems like your heart is set on that place, and your heart really isn't in Mexico, and you're going to be miserable even if you made a ton of money living in Mexico. Uh, so, find the quickest route with the least amount of money and time expended getting to be a doctor in the country of your choosing. I think even with the EU, the standards may be universalized. I, I don't know, but uh, consider that. Uh, find out the country you want to go to and how you become a doctor there, and then figure out how, how you can take whatever time and, and money you've invested in Mexico to get there as quickly as possible. Uh, but don't give up on your entrepreneurial job. Uh, as for the prototype, you're not going to have that much time. Um, I don't know how much free time you have. You could be one of those freaks of nature. I mean, well, your resident, residencies here in the United States, you're just like sleeping at the hospital. Um, they suck. Um, that doesn't mean you won't have time. And, you know, building prototypes, you need gear and equipment because, trust me, I would love nothing more than, like, rebuild cars. I really would. I don't have the money or the room or the garage for a garage and for the tools and all the stuff I need. I need like about $100,000 worth of tools and equipment in a garage. Uh, so it may be worth definitely $3,000, that's nothing. Now one thing you may want to consider is like, you know, Kickstarter or um, any one of these peer-to-peer -peer or, or independent financing kind of deals. See if people are willing to finance you and you could come up with the $3,000. But I'd just have them do it. Get the prototype out there. Because here's the thing. I know what you want. You want the intellectual stimulation of actually building the thing so you understand it. That's cool. That's great. But that's not where money is. Money, look at, look at fucking, uh, who's the guy? Uh, uh, not Bill Gates. Stephen Jobs. To quote Bill Burr, I don't think he created it. I think he says, I want all my music play, all my music collection on that. Get on it. Look up Bill Burr with uh, Stephen Jobs. Stephen Jobs was an idea man. I don't think he had the technical know-how to build a modern day iPhone 5. And you don't have time to be seeing their soldering. It's, it's appreciative. The engineers will applaud you and love, love you if you do know how to build one. But you're not fucking Tony Stark. You, and I don't mean intelligence-wise. You probably are. You don't have billions of fucking dollars that your dad left you. You don't have the time. Uh, so I would probably outsource it. Make sure you got some really good legal contracts that they don't steal it from you. You know, consult the lawyer. But you're good. That's just how it is. Um, so, you know, so, yeah, if, if you can only focus on electronics two hours a day. That's better than what most people do in their lives on any hobby. So, um yeah. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, so do both. Truthfully, I know it's you're probably in the thick of it, and this probably sucks, and you want you know all this work. You're only 23. You've seen no fruits of your labor, but just push through a little bit more. And this time, under the context of getting to Europe or getting to some place you really like, and man, you are going to be so much better set than most people. Me, least of all. I mean, you're going to blow people out of the water, man. So, uh, yeah, definitely do that. And then pick up some salsa dancing skills because the ladies like that shit. So, all right, we'll talk to you guys later. Toodles.